We are talking today about the 338 Winchester Magnum. Now, this round, the 338, was introduced in 1958. Yeah. Winchester basically took a 458 Winchester Magnum cartridge. A big. Uh, which is a monster. Hold your finger out. Yep, it's bigger. Yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and necked it down to the 338 caliber. Yep. Now, 338 caliber, is a, it's a good in-between. Uh Good size, bigger than the thirty at six, but still smaller than the three seventy five. Yeah, and smaller than the three fifty. And yeah, and but at the time there wasn't many big three fifties. You no, know, you had, you had the thirty five Whalen, but which that was, was still there. not a factory offering. No, it wasn't a factory offering, so um, it was a wildcat. And then and, and there was some other, but the three thirty is a good size, and it was a good, you know, medium size for bear, moose, elk. Well, the and everything else large. The thirty-three caliber was basically a wildcat up until this point in history. Also, right. I mean, the, now I'm telling the, you, if Captain Quint would have had one of these, he might have killed the shark before it killed him. Well, maybe you never know. I think the whole key there was an oxygen tank. They should have got a bigger boat. But anyways, <laughs> um, so it was introduced in 1958. Yeah, neck down 458 Winchester Magnum, which is a the beast of the world the, here, right there. Here's the key to it, though. Because it was a standard length action. That's right. The price was able to be... It was a small... Oh, it was affordable magnum. It was affordable magnum. Right. Now, it's the same length, basically, as a 30 out 6 it, it is. It's not huge, but it is a big one. You know what I mean? It, so, it doesn't have to be an extra long action or anything. Now, before the 338... We're talking bold action rifles here. Right. Well, and they, they came out later and some other stuff, too. But right. the 338, before there was a 338, Elmer Keith and some of his buddies designed the 33 OKH. What didn't Elmer Keith and his buddies You know, design? I'm realizing that the further we go along in the show, it's like he had his hands in everything. Yep. Um, everything smelled like cigars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so it was called the 33 OKH. And it was kind of their own proprietary round, and, and it was gaining popularity. And I think basically if Elmer Keith said he wanted something, somebody was going to jump on it and get well, it done. Well, of course they were. Uh, so He's the one that said, I want to land on the moon, and next thing you know, we landed on the moon. Oh, there you go. See there? Because Elmer Keith said so. Um, anyways. <laughs> never mind. That threw him off target. Winchester created in 1958 the Magnum, uh, the 338. <laughs> And uh, it's it's pretty amazing. When it first came out, it only had two offerings for bullet size. For bullet weight? You had a 200-grain bullet, which would go 3,000 feet per second. Smoking. Or you had your 300-grain bullet, which would go 2,450 feet per second. But I imagine the foot-pounds of energy on that little monster was pretty darn I, high. A 300-grain th- bullet, bullet at 338 feet. bullet going just as fast as my 44 Magnum will do out of a rifle. That's telling me, and this has got probably four times the range. Yeah, because, I mean, you think about it. When I shoot a 300-grain bullet out of my 444 Marlin, it's it's uh, it's only going 2,000 feet per second. And, yeah. it's a, you know, and you watch so, cinder blocks explode when you hit them. So this has the power and the range. Um, yeah. And, and that's what's uh, one of those amazing things about these rounds that, I guess you'd call the 330, not forgotten, but it is one of those popular rounds that's still out there. Now, here we go. We just answered our, my own question. Yes. The Model 7, you know, Winchester created the Model 70 Alaskan just for this cartridge. Right. That was what the fellow was one it? next was. That was a 338 Winchester Model 70 Alaskan with the Leopold scope on it. Huh. So uh, that's what he won. So, so but it, Winchester said that it gave hunters the fair idea of what this cartridge was intended for when they created the gun just for it. Sure. Sure. Well, I mean, it's you know, it's made for big, heavy game, yeah. you know, and dangerous animals. So, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a thumper. That's for sure. Now, I just want to give everybody a good reminder too. Uh, at ten o'clock, we're going to Beaky's. That's right. We're going to be at Beaky's in, in Flushing. I'm just going to just bring this up right now. Okay. Because Mike Gaylord's there now getting ready. And uh, he's getting ready to uh, come on live with his show at Beaky's. And then we're going to scoot out there real quick. Because at this time, we have people in the lobby at Beaky's selling raffle tickets for our Knights of Columbus gun raffle. we got five guns we're raffling off out there at Williams. And now uh, we want to make sure you get out there and... Uh, uh, and jump on board. Get some raffle tickets before they're over with. We got a caller. Hi, hi, caller. Who's this? This is John Bradburn. How you doing, John? I am good this morning, John. How are you? Oh, good. I, you know, I just wanted to thank you and Jake for uh, hosting Dan and I at the, the 
Safari Club dinner. We well, had a great time. It was a pleasure having you guys out there with us. Thanks for coming. And uh, I, I, I think you knew a lot more people there than we did. You, you, you were a hot item around there. <laughs> well, there's quite a few of us Bradburns around, but, but you know, what I seen there was uh, a good example of how hunters and outdoorsmen, uh, you know, fishermen as well, uh, get together and have a great time. A lot of traditional groups there I could see. And yep. Yeah. I spent close to 800 people there. Oh, that, yeah, it was a lot of family bonding, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, the family of hunters, I mean, you know, they were... You saw a lot of the, the generations. You had grandparents with with the kids and the grandkids there. Yes. All going for the same cause. And and certainly, you know, when it all boils down to it, they were getting some bargains on some awesome hunts, too. Absolutely right. Yeah, that, that's, what, that's, what, there too. that's what really surprised me was... Uh, what a value some of those hunts were going for and uh, made me want to plan my next trip there. <laughs> and I'm sure you're thinking the same thing. <laughs> I know. Uh, well, yeah, we had a great time having you guys here with us, and we really appreciate it. And uh, thanks for being a part of the show. Uh, and, and I'm sure we are going to be talking again pretty soon because I was just talking to uh, the lovely Mrs. Gunsmith show about uh, your recycling that we were going to talk about on the I can build that show, so uh, the the thought process is rolling. Okay, all righty. I'd be <laughs> happy to sit in and talk about what we're doing at GM and what we're doing around our houses, That's, what we're doing in our households, and uh, to uh, help the environment. You bet. And you know what? And when it all boils down to it, we're all trying to be environmentally friendly and smart. Uh, and if you're not, you should be. So uh, that's right. Thanks a bunch, Mr. Bradburn. We sure appreciate it, and we'll look forward to talking to you in the near future. All right. Take, take care, John. All right. You too. Bye-bye now. Bye. All right. Well, that was nice of Mr. Bradburn to give us a call. He was, of course, a guest of ours last week and a guest of SCI at the SCI dinner. That's so right. thanks a bunch. Well, we got to go to commercial break. We do. So when we come back, we're going to finish talking about the 338, and we're going to tell you who currently makes a rifle in the 338. Sounds like And a good maybe idea. who currently makes a handgun. In 338. You're kidding me. No, I'm just kidding. There is none. <laughs> okay, hang on tight, folks. We'll be back in just a minute with a lot more guns for the show. Everyone knows Williams Gun Sight in Davison is the place to go for all your firearm, shooting accessories, hunting gear, and so much more. Plus, great gunsmiths in-house to take care of all your maintenance and customizing needs. But what you might not know, Williams has a great website, williamsgunsight.com. You can browse all their accessories, plus their huge selection of used guns. So definitely check out their website, williamsgunsight.com, and swing into the store, 7389 Lapeer Road, that's in Davison. Exit 143 off I-6. They're open Monday through Saturday, 9 until 6, and Sunday, 10 until 5. Williams Gunsight, on the range since 1926. Attorney Tim Cassidy defends responsible gun owners. Do you need help with your CPL-related issues or have legal questions related to your gun rights? Attorney Tim Cassidy has over 15 years on the Genesee County Gun Board and many more years in practice. He can help you. Attorney Cassidy is also the professional who provides training to local groups and organizations on legal issues related to firearms and the use of force in self-defense. If you need an attorney who believes in the Second Amendment, you need Attorney Tim Cassidy at 810-569-5441. That's 810-569-5441 for responsible gun ownership legal help. Who's watching your home? Who's watching your business? Pal Burglar Alarm can watch them for you. They have over 30 years experience protecting homes and businesses in mid-Michigan. Pal Burglar Alarm provides 24-hour monitoring service through their UL listed monitoring center based right here in Michigan. They also offer armed guard services and no long-term contracts. Besides burglary protection, they can also monitor for flooding, sump pump failure, CO2 detection, temperature sensors to prevent pipes from freezing, panic, fire, and driveway alarms. PAL Burglar Alarm, a price you can live with. Call them today at 810-908-8298. That's 810-908-8298 or palalarm.com. And now back to the Gunsmith Show with John and Jake Smith. If you'd like to talk to John or Jake, call now, 810-743-8255. All right. Saturday morning, March 15th, talking guns. Can't get any better than that. Uh, Jacob, we're still talking about the the 338 Winchester Magnum. That's right. Uh, We're talking about 
uh, really, we were talking about knockdown power last time. We're the yeah. the, the power it has uh, a 300 grain bullet going 2450. That's 2450 feet per second. So, and well, can you working? Can, can you? But it's believe it, it's not still big enough to go to Africa with, is it? Not anymore. Back then it was. Yeah. Back then it was because currently in Africa you have to have you know 375 for some of that larger game. But they found out. That if you used the 200 grain bullet in the 338 Winchester Magnum, it surpassed the 375 H and H in range yeah. in Africa. So that was kind of the, the 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 choice round for a while with some of the newer hunters um, was the 200 grain bullet in the 338 Winchester Magnum. I imagine that's a good one. Now there's one downfall to this rifle. Uh oh, it's the recoil. Yeah, it hurts a little bit, doesn't they it? Said they said the people are usually okay with the recoil from a Anywhere from a 30 out 6 to a 7 millimeter Magnum. People are usually okay. They can handle that for a couple shots. Three, a three, 30 out 6 has about 30 foot pounds of kick. Of kick. Well, the 338 doubles that. 60 pounds, 60 foot pounds of kick recoil. On your shoulder. On your shoulder. So that might save you a trip to the chiropractor. Might just yeah. put that back back in place for you. Shoot one hand, one left handed, one it's, hand right handed, one shot right handed. Basically, it's because <laughs> of how large the case is, how much powder it holds. Yeah, it, it, it would have been different if they took the thirty out six and necked it up to thirty three caliber. Yeah, that would have been a three thirty eight out six. Right, and that's Which what some of the, that's what some of the wildcats before this, and they said that was more manageable because it was the same round, it's like a thirty-five Whalen. It's a man, exactly. it's manageable recoil. But the three thirty-eight was you have a such a larger capacity for for powder. Yeah, and you know you got magnum primer, you got magnum powder. Uh, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's a lot of that's a lot of smoke. And you know, it's originally it was a two hundred grain bullet or a three hundred grain bullet. Well, right, a lot of your. Barnes rounds and Remington makes you know their fancy rounds and Winchester makes their fancy hunting rounds for it and so does Hornady and, and Federal. A lot of those are either 200 or 225 grain today. Okay. Yeah, I've seen a lot of those. The 225 middles. grain Spire points yep. and, the and they've sure core are, locks. They, they've got all the different uh, Barnes bullets and, and everything. Yep. Now when you uh, when you're dealing with these 338. Now didn't I'm almost certain Roy Weatherby came out with a. He did. With a 338. He, he called it the 340 Weatherby Magnum. Right. And it completely surpasses the 338 Winchester Magnum. It's got more more powder because capacity and different different shoulder and everything on the shell. Yeah. The Winchester was based on the 458 Winchester Magnum. Right. Which it was basically almost a straight walled cartridge that they knocked down even more. But the Weatherby took a 375 H&H and necked it down. Really? So it was even a larger cartridge. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're going to talk about that next week, just because sure? that's the weather be such a, it's a beast. It's a beast, and it's a, such a big story that it requires really its own talk about that. All right. Well, um, who makes? If I was looking for a three thirty eight right now, yeah. What would I go looking for? Well, there's a lot of different companies that make them in bolt action, and actually, at one point, Browning was making them in their BAR rifles. Yes, too. they were. I had a friend that has one. Yep. 11 pound rifle. They might still make them, but I was searching just for bolt action rifles for this. A popular elk round. And I'm sure they make their, their Browning lever action in it too. Mm-hmm. But uh, so, but Browning does make the new X bolt in 338. Oh, yeah. Well, the nice thing about these rifles, though, is the length of the action. It's a standard. That's why length. just about anybody that makes a bolt action rifle can make a 338 Winchester yep. Magnum. Mossberg makes their 4x4 bolt action in it. Yeah. Remington makes the Model 700. Extreme conditions rifle in it. Oh, that's the one that's all the satin uh, yeah, stainless satin and everything. stainless in the Kevlar. Yeah, nice. Ruger makes the guide gun and the Alaskan Hawkeye rifle in it. Both of them are beautiful. That guide gun is just awesome guns. Yeah, they are those. And, and that, those are the choices right there. I tell you what. And the Rugers come with the muzzle brake too. Yes, uh, yes. They so do. Uh, Savage makes the Alaskan Brush Hunter, the Hog Hunter, and the Bear Hunter all in this caliber. Mm. Just kind of tells you the power of it. Hog hunter. Thompson Center makes their venture rifle, their their new bolt action. Oh yeah, that's good. That's, that's got an interesting grip structure to it. I like yeah. the 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 venture rifle from Thompson Center. That's something to look at. It looks a little weak in the middle. Yeah. Uh, and there was a recall, but I don't know if. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It's a good I've always thought of Thompson though. as muzzle loaders, but they sure have the capacity of making great muzzle loaders. So I'm sure they make great rifles oh, too. Oh yeah. Yep. 
Um, Weatherby makes the Vanguard in 338 Winchester Magnum. Oh, but the yeah, they don't put it in the Mark Fives. Right, not okay. in the Mark Fives. But the Vanguard's a good rifle. I think yep. it's a it's a Howa. It's a it's an affordable yeah. Weatherby. Yep. Uh, and Winchester does still chamber in their Model 70 Alaska. Yes, they do. Along with the Sporter and the Super Grade. There you go. And that's one of those. Dis- I, I, I've been using the word quintessential this past week a lot. Mm-hmm. The quintessential American rifle would be a Winchester Model 70. And 338. And 338 in, in, in the Alaskan or the Super Grade. Now, Winchester's, I think they're still made in Japan. Currently. Probably. Good looking guns, though. So I guess it's kind of an American rifle. Well, it was designed here originally. It's like buying a Chevy. There's a lot of parts made all over the world in yeah. that sucker, but still they, a Chevy. But you know what? A lot of those dealers still say, we're your American dealer. Yeah, there you go. So, all right. Now, honestly, if you're looking for a 338, it looks like you have a pretty good list of places to go. But And, and there's a couple, you know, you, you, the 338, look at the calibers that are related to it. You've got the 338 Lapua. Yeah. The 338 dash 378 weatherby magnum yeah the 338 marlin express which is the same thing but a lever action rifle which is amazing and you get your 338 remington ultra magnum which is massive mm-hmm. and your 338 ruger compact magnum which is nice it's not too big but it works mm-hmm. but out of all those the 338 lapua smokes them all well yeah that is the round. That's now. a fifty caliber neck down to three three eight. It, it's it? almost. It's big. Now what big. it's doing is uh it's being heavily used in long range sniper stuff. The fifteen, sixteen hundred yard stuff, that's what they're using. So think about that. Fifteen, sixteen hundred yards. Long way. We've got that's some friends way. got them right here in the Flint area and they are so proud of those rifles. You can get them. They have them in stock, I believe, at Williams right now. They they're about do. two thousand bucks. But so maybe if I had my buyback or my my buyout check or what's it called from GM, uh, bonus bonus yeah bonus my my tax bonus I get from the American workers, <laughs> um I guess I might buy one of these so <laughs> come on now don't be that harsh now uh, I just want to re- remind everybody get a chance get out to Beaky's and see us in a little bit we're going to be there selling raffle tickets for several hours yep uh, but we're going to be uh, turning this over to Mike Gaylord in just a couple minutes. He's there set up, and he's going to do his show live from Beaky's. Jake and I are going to scoot out there real quick and do the I Can Build That show we're from gonna Beaky's. We're going to fly, literally. No, we're not. We're just going to drive slow over potholes. Jump. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, we might have to jump some. They're pretty big. So We'll be out there us, doing that, yeah, come 10 on out, o'clock. Yeah, 10 o'clock, and then we'll be in the lobby after that. We've got people selling raffle tickets now, so uh, get out and help. Now, that raffle is a very important raffle. It's uh, All the money goes to charity, of course. Uh, but uh, half the money is going to go to the Thomas Smith Memorial Foundation, which is a blessing. Uh, we are going to save lives with it. We're going to buy more medical equipment and do heart screenings. We've got a heart screening coming up in Goodrich, coming up real quick. Uh, we'll have the dates and everything. should have the dates next week, dates and times for those teenage heart screenings, which is very, very important. And, um, and on that note, uh, we want to make sure that uh, you guys, all everybody out there that's shooters, Get out and enjoy this little bit of warm weather we got. Get out to the range. Might want to bring some galoshes because <laughs> it's going to be muddy. Uh, but let's get out and do some shooting this weekend, folks. You know, right now is the time when leagues are starting. The outdoor leagues are starting. You got. You might be into western shooting. You might be into uh, long range shooting. You might be into silhouette shooting. Shotgun. Shotgun. Some There's a clay. lot of good clay courses out there right now. You got the Genesee Sportsman's Club. You got the Huntsman Club. You got... Uh, Grand Blank Sportsman's Club. Uh, great places to go. And if you want to get warmed up, let's go out and shoot some clays today out at Williams. That'd be a great idea. They've got a great clay range right there at the corner of I-69 and Irish Road. Uh, come on out, spend some time on the range, have some fun. And uh, I think we'll be out there tomorrow. So that's where we're, we're going to be doing some, some gun shopping tomorrow is what we're hoping for. Gun shopping and, uh, and a little camaraderie time at the range. Now, something we want to mention is Williams just had their class on reloading. It was a complete success. It's so, it was booked in two hours. In two hours it was booked. So that's going to be something ongoing. We're going to want to continue that process going. For those of you that want to have the basics on reloading, because reloading is certainly uh, a hot topic right now with the ammunition shortage. You can learn a lot by taking one of these classes. Uh, Eli and Matt ran this class. Brian got it set up. 
out at Williams, and you just can't beat them. The number out there is uh, at Williams. Jacob, do you got the number for Williams right handy? I do not. It's in my speed dial. I'll have it for you in just a second, <laughs> folks. But if you want to get out there and get your name on a list for the next one, I bet you they can help you. Because so seven four two, two one two zero. There you go. Eight one zero seven four two two one two zero. Good deal. Thank you. I got about five numbers, so I've got they all do. of them in my phone. So I got to dig them out. But I just hit speed dial because it's on my favorites. Oh, <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah. Where am I? Twenty seven. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not quite. Tells that you bad. where his priorities are, folks. Not quite that bad. All right. Well, listen, that's we're going to be turning this over to Mike Gaylord in just a minute. That's right. And we are very proud to be coming out there, and he's going to help us with our show, and we're going to help him with his. So, uh, Mike, you get ready for us out there at Beaky's, and uh, say hi to Denny and Chris and the whole Hee Haw gang and Matt, and and I got some folks out working in the lobby real hard right now, Jackie. And Steve are working in the lobby right now selling raffle tickets, so stop out and get them. You know, Jake, tell us about how people get a hold of us. That's right. If you want to get a hold of us, send us a letter in the mail. The Gunsmith Show, P.O. Box 45, Flushing, Michigan, 48433. Or email us, shooter at the gss.com. It's our best way. It comes right to my phone now. Uh-oh. So we are streamlined. So I, we basically, <laughs> we can get your question answered quick. Uh, find us online at thegss.com. That's where our past shows are on. And you can see our Guns of the Week. Yeah, on And the always website. find us on Facebook. That's the you know that's the funnest way to contact us. Everybody's on Facebook. If you're not, well, just join just to become a fan of the Gunsmith Show. That's right. A lot of people do. So do that. Have some fun this week. And remember, shoot straight, shoot often, and uh, God bless you all. Thanks for listening to the Gunsmith Show today. Catch you out at Beaky's in an hour. Until then, enjoy Mike Gaylord. We're the Gunsmiths. I'm John. And I'm Jake. And we're out of here.